Dear God, you know how much I've been looking forward to the pizza party. We've planned it for, well, it seems like forever. We sent out the invitations, and it took a while for everybody to tell me if they could come. Then we made a sign-up sheet so people could bring their favorite ingredients. Even pineapple. Dad and I were going to make the dough so everybody could make their own personal pizza. I never helped make the dough before. So I was excited when we started setting out the ingredients in Grandma DeMartino's recipe. We had to make a lot of dough so everybody would get their pizza. Now, when you make pizza dough, you need to put some yeast in a bowl with water and then wait for it to have some bubbles. Dad had a phone call, so I waited some more. And waited and waited and waited. I thought I waited long enough, but I didn't. We waited on the dough to rise, but it never did. I thought I'd ruin the whole party, but then Dad said even Grandma did the same thing. We went to the store to get some pre-made dough we could use. It wasn't like Grandma's, but at least that way, we could still have the party. God, thank you for a great party. We need to try it again sometime. But next time, help me to remember to have a little more patience. Chase. Hello, everybody. That was a good example about patience, wasn't it? They could have enjoyed the homemade pizza dough like the original plan, but because of his impatience, that plan had to change. Everything ended up working out, and they still had a fun pizza party. But had he just waited a little longer, they would have had the homemade dough from his grandma's recipe. I told you last week that I made cinnamon rolls, and I almost did the same thing with my yeast when it didn't bubble. The recipe said five minutes for it to start bubbling, and after six minutes it still wasn't, so I almost threw it out. But I waited a few more minutes, and sure enough, it started to bubble. Good thing I waited, because my family sure enjoyed those for dessert that night. Now I know I'm using food as an example of waiting, so let's see what our verse says about waiting. It says, wait for the Lord. Be strong and don't lose hope. Wait for the Lord. Psalm 27, 14. In today's story, we go to Genesis 25, where we find one of the best examples of what happens when you're not patient. The story of Esau. I don't want to give too much away, but guess what? This story involves food, too. <laughs> Let's take a look. The Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how He created us and loves us so much that He made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Genesis, chapter 25, verses 24 through 34. When Abraham's son Isaac grew up, he married a girl named Rebecca, but it didn't seem as though they'd be able to have children. Please God, give us children. But God answered Isaac's prayers and Rebecca became pregnant with twins. Isaac, I'm pretty sure they're having a wrestling match in here. Oh, definitely boys. Rebecca asked God about the struggle she could feel. He told her, Two nations are in your body. One nation will be stronger than the other. The older son will serve the younger one. When it was time for the babies to be born, they came out fighting. Esau was born first. He came out with a strong set of lungs and a head full of red hair. His brother Jacob was born moments later, still holding on to Esau's heel. How on earth did he manage that? The brothers shared the same birthday, but as they grew, that was about the only thing they had in common. Esau loved to roam far out into the wilderness. I would walk 500 miles and I would walk 500 more. Jacob preferred the comforts of home. The sun is so hot, I'll just take a little nap in the tent. Esau loved to hunt wild animals. That is one excellent wildebeest. Jacob preferred a different type of hunting. Not you, not you. Ha! <laughs> the perfect ripe honeydew melon. One fine morning, Esau headed out into the wilds in search of adventure and some nice juicy venison. I'll feast tonight. 
But Isa went all morning without spotting a single rabbit. Ugh, should have packed a lunch. In the afternoon, he tracked a deer for hours, but he missed his chance as the deer sprang away. Ah! At last, Isa headed for home, defeated. He was tired and irritated and so hungry he could eat an entire woolly mammoth. Must eat food. As Isa neared camp, a delicious smell wafted out to greet him. Food. Jacob had been home all day, resting and plucking his favorite herbs from his garden. A little coriander, some dill. As evening approached. Jacob used his savory herbs to whip up a tasty red lentil stew and a batch of fresh buttery bread. This will crisp up nicely on the hot stones. By the time Isa had arrived in camp, Jacob's stew was simmered to perfection, and the bread was hot and crusty. Food, food. Isa lunged for the stew cauldron, ready to grab a bowl, but Jacob blocked his path. Not so fast. Step aside. I'm hungry. Clearly. Just let me have some of that red stew. Certainly. Isa tried to dive for the stew pot again. Ah 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 ah. Just one itty bitty thing. What? Well, first, uh, give me the rights that belong to you as the oldest son. Isa spent more time listening to his stomach than his brain. So in that moment, his stomach won out. Look, I'm dying of hunger. If I die, those rights are pointless anyway. Now give me that stew. Isa sprang forward once more. Ah! Promise to give me your rights. Fine. Fine what? Fine. I promise. Promise what? I promise to give you my rights as the oldest. Cool. Help yourself. Jacob stepped aside as Isa hurled himself at the stew pot. Stew! Isa happily gorged himself on rich stew and fresh bread, but. As his stomach filled up, he had time to stop and think again. Isa had just traded the rights of a lifetime for a meal that would only last him a few hours. Isa was so hungry that he let his hunger get the best of him, and he reacted to the first option of food that he was presented with. He traded his birthright for a bowl of stew. Crazy, right? We will face moments where we want to rush and take the first choice that comes our way, but that might not be God's best for us. You might not lose your birthright like Esau did, but you could lose screen time privileges, or miss out on doing something fun with your family, or you could hurt a friendship by saying something you regret. That's why we need to learn to wait until later for the things we want right now. But with God's help, we can practice patience. It's time to sing and worship together. So stand to your feet, everybody.
about your week, our hope is that you would stop and pray and wait on God before making a quick decision that may not be the best for you. Let's pray. God, I pray right now um, just for that, Lord, that as we go about our week, that we would be able to lean on you and stop and pray and wait, wait upon you, have hope in you, that you know what's best for us and you have a plan for us. We praise you and we trust you in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a great week, everybody.